Hi, welcome back to Make It Hacking. We're gonna be doing another product unboxing and review, and today we're gonna to be doing it on the Adven adjustable circuit board holder. Uh, so I got this from Amazon. I picked it up for $13. Uh, it's not, not such a bad deal. Um, now, the reason I got this one, there's another popular circuit board holder known as the Panavice. And it's sort of this like metallic bottom with this like sort of like robot looking hand uh, to grab circuit boards. Uh, that one is about $30. This one's $13. That's purely why I got this one is because it's cheaper and I'm trying to save my money to buy better projects to hack and that sort of thing. Um, so I got this one. It has a 4.5 out of 5 star rating on Amazon um, as of uh, the day I made this video. Like I said, it's $13 uh, free shipping on Prime if you're an Amazon Prime member. Um, don't fall for getting the quantity of two because the quantity of two says $30, but you get one for $13. Um, so if you do the math, you're giving them an extra $4 if you do the one that comes with the two pack. So these are ideal for clamping printed circuit boards, PCBs, um, doing soldering work, desoldering work. It's retractable. Um, so this one says that it can uh, fit circuit boards up to 198 millimeters wide and up to four millimeters thick and allows it to rotate the PCB 360 although I think that you're going to be doing that manually with your hands. Um, it says it's got a rigid metal structure and it's got rubber feet on the bottom to ensure stability. Um, so here's the box. Uh, we see on the front it's got you know a picture of the item um, and the specs. All right, and then on the side, we have the assembly instructions. So we'll be looking at those when we assemble it. On the back, it's just pointing out the different uh, components. So uh, you have the clamp teeth uh, and some knobs. That's basically it. So it's manufactured in China, but um, the company is based in the US and they have their telephone number, fax, and email on the bottom, um, as well as their website. How to use. Um, so instructions for how to use it are on the other side of the box uh, basically says loosen the knobs, adjust the distance, secure the circuit board, and then go with your steps from there. So that's all on the out box. Let's go ahead and make it happen. All right. So box is empty now. On the inside we have some cardboard sort of spacers. As you can see here is sort of the main body right here. And then inside this other sort of tube of cardboard are the feet it looks like. All right, so let's get the cardboard out of the way. All right, so assembly instructions say fasten clamp arms to stand support legs with enclosed screws. Um, so it looks like the enclosed screws are already on the feet. Um, so on the main sort of part right here, we'll call this the main, um, it's got these uh, blue sort of support arms. On the bottom of the support arms are these little uh, screw holes here and they're kind of like offset. They're not exactly in a straight line. Um, and so we can see that those kind of match up with the screws like that. Uh, so you do need a screwdriver, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver for this application. Luckily we have one. All right, so this is the sort of mini precision screwdriver set that I have. I love it. My friend Joe introduced me to it. It's called the Nantech Precision Screwdriver Set. It's got 22 magnetic bits and this really nice metal sort of main body. And um, it just feels really nice. You can rotate it very well. And if you pull down, I'm sorry, if you, and if you pull down at the front, you can actually extend this thing um, to give you an extra few inches. I love this thing. It is, it is very solid. I'll link that below. All right, so I'm just going to take the Phillips. All right, take out the screws. Doo -doo -doo. And I believe a number two Phillips would work on this just as well. Um, this, but I've been using one of my bigger Phillips bits and it's doing okay. All 
All right, so now that we have the screws out, we're gonna put the main onto the legs. So just line it up with the holes. And since these are magnetic, I'm actually just gonna put the screw on and then put it in. Um, a good sort of thing to remember, um, you might already know this, but if not, in something like this where you have multiple screws and you're trying to line stuff up all at the same time, you never want to tighten one screw all the way down first. Um, you want to put in sort of every screw in. It doesn't really matter which order for this application, uh, but don't tighten them all the way down. That'll give you a little bit of flexibility to, to move things around. So here we go, second screw. And then once you're done putting in all the screws loosely, then you can go back in and tighten them as you need. All right, third screw. And finally, the fourth. Okay, and on the fourth screw, I'm gonna tighten that one all the way down. I'll go back to my third screw, tighten that all the way, and then to the other side. All right, so now we have our circuit board holder all assembled, uh, very easy. And now it's time to sort of test it out. So there are four knobs, um, one on each arm. Uh, they're on the same side, as you can see here. So the top ones will sort of let you loosen and um, push the, the holder in and out. Uh, this one is spring powered. The other one is doesn't have a spring it just kind of there's a little bit of give um, so it looks like the main one that we're going to be uh, adjusting the entire time is the one with the spring so I'm actually going to just let the other one go all the way in and tighten there these other knobs will let you move the legs so you can go like this and this is probably something else where you want to just keep one fixed and move the other one so I'm just going to keep the one with the non-spring arm fixed. So I'll tighten that. Um, so most likely I will not have to adjust uh, the screws on the side, only these two. Because you'll see, as I loosen this side, I can move that sort of in and out. It's not like you have to move both of them in at the same distance. Um, it's not going to wobble um, like this. Now you might have to worry about wobbling depending on your application, but uh, for the most part, it looks like this thing isn't going to wobble. So as you see, that's how it adjusts, right? And then you would lock your um, distance in like here, that sort of thing, and just kind of move this around as you need it. All right, so to test this out, I'm going to use this little relay board. Um, so again, I'll probably keep those screws on my side, adjust it, and sort of insert this. You can see that there's these little sort of teeth and circuit boards fit in there. Uh, so you can either fit them horizontally uh, like this, All right? There you go. Um, you can do it upside down, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, the other cool thing is that it has vertical teeth as well. So you can mount your circuit board vertically in case, you know, you just need that sort of orientation. Um, so once you mount the circuit board, there's a little bit of a give. You don't want to bring it in all the way so that you're compressing the spring. Um, springs don't want to be compressed and they shouldn't be left in a compressed state for a long time. So just kind of bring it in a little bit, tighten the leg, tighten the arm, and there you go. It's pretty solid in there. Uh, Another reason that they have spring is if you want to take this out, you can just simply um, untighten the arm, pull the spring back, and now you can bring that thing out. So there you go. That's how you do it. You don't even need to tighten this arm. It's going to be fine. Um, and look at this. 
you can even rotate that. So that's pretty cool. You can rotate that. So if you need a different angle, boom. You know, so I think that's the 360 that they're talking about. Now when I rotate it, you can probably hear that noise. So let me take that out, loosen that all the way. It makes that noise no matter what. So it's the spring making that noise. Um, I guess it just doesn't want to be rotated, you know, it, it'll, it'll rotate, but it just doesn't want to be, so there's the friction is sort of like catching the, the spring, but yeah, you can rotate that. Boom. And actually, if you loosen this arm, it rotates a lot easier too. So once you got the good angle and you're, see if you, if you're soldering at an angle, and you hit your soldering iron like this, it's gonna, it's gonna move. Um, so actually you do want to lock it in um, at the position, right? Cause your soldering iron can, can move it. So let's say I'm soldering on the back, lock this in, lock this in over here. And now that thing's not moving. So if I need to work on this side, I can do it from this side and that sort of thing. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a, uh, you know, a four and a half star, just like Amazon has its uh, current over 500 reviews. Um, this thing is pretty solid. You know, this thing isn't gonna isn't gonna wobble and it costs $13, right? So it's less than half the price as the other one. It might take up more space. It might not have the nice, uh, you know, 360 degree head on it that can move all over the place. But if you're using it for soldering circuit boards, I mean, how crazy are you gonna get, right? Uh, so this is a good little circuit board clamp. I highly recommend this. Uh, this is the Advin adjustable circuit board hoarder. Get on Amazon, $13. Free shipping if you're a Prime member. Get it in two days, hopefully. Um, and yeah, so we'll see you in the next video. Let's make it happen.